So good autofocus is not even a pro-line feature that you would need to pay a premium for. Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we'll be focusing on how to properly focus manually. Now I know we all watch numerous YouTube videos about the latest camera launch and all the autofocus features it has and whether it's good or whether it's bad, how the autofocus is. But to be honest, we have to remember that even the top line cinema cameras that are used to shoot Hollywood movies don't even have an autofocus feature. So good autofocus is not even a pro line feature that you would need to pay a premium for. <coughs> Sony. That's why in Hollywood, it's literally someone's job to make sure that everything shot is in focus. And that's the focus puller. So what are the benefits of manual focus? Well, for one, you don't get that annoying focus hunting or focus breathing that we all know can ruin any great shot. Second of all, you, the camera operator, should be the one to make the decision on what to focus on and what not to. Because at the end of the day, you are the one telling a story. So how does manual focus actually work? It's all about the distance between your camera and your subject. As long as the distance is maintained between the two and you know your subject isn't gonna move. So you pull focus before you start recording and it'll always be in focus. So with that said, I have seven tips for you on how to better manual focus. All right, so in order to manual focus, you will actually need to switch your lens to manual focus. So I'm gonna call this tip zero, because without this, you can't move on. So tip zero is you literally switch your lens from autofocus to manual focus, as well as within your camera itself. Tip number one, focus peaking. Go to your camera's settings menu and you should have a variety of colors to choose from. Depending on your scene, choose a color that would stand out. Once it's on and you start turning the focus ring on your lens, you should see the color outline appearing within your scene. This basically lets you know with a quick glance what's in focus or not. To further assist us, let's move on to the next tip, which is manual focus assist. Most all modern cameras have a feature called MF assist or manual focus assist, where you're able to magnify somewhere within your image to see if you are in focus. While zoomed in, we can move our focus ring, ensuring everything is in 100% focus. Using this combo of manual focus assist and focus peaking should really help you out. Tip number three, increase your aperture. The more open your lens is to let light enter, the shallower your depth of field. Just remember, the lower your aperture, the harder it is to keep your subject in focus as it moves. So that's why it's better to increase your aperture to around 2.8 or higher and that way you'll have more of the background in focus, allowing you to not miss that focus if even if the subject moves slightly. By increasing the aperture, we ultimately are sacrificing the amount of light that can enter the lens. To compensate that, you can do two things. One, get more lights, but if that's not possible, you could actually increase your ISO within your camera to allow light in body. The only downside of shooting with a higher aperture is that you end up losing the bokeh in the background, AKA that cinematic secret sauce. Nice. Tip number four, planning your shots. Tracking a subject while it's moving towards or away from the camera is a bit difficult to do while manual focusing. The last thing you wanna do is hold your camera with one hand and constantly change the focus ring with the other. This is going to end up with unusable footage. One tip is to focus on specific markers. In the case of shooting product videos, get the focus on the subject where you know the end position is going to be. As long as the same distance is maintained, the subject will be in focus. Moving on to tip number five. Rack focus. A technique used most often in Hollywood movies is to rack focus on or off a subject. Remember, you are the camera operator. You are the storyteller. 
where you focus on diverts the viewer's attention. So this is actually one of the main reasons to start using manual focus because it helps you tell better stories. An easy way to rack focus is to start the subject in focus and then pull away. In post, you can actually reverse it and then it looks like your subject is coming into focus. Tip number six, don't stress. Usually, most of the shots on YouTube are no longer than three to five seconds long. So you don't need to have every second of every shot to be perfectly in focus. Just use the best few seconds that you have and then edit out the rest. And that's what a lot of people forget because they feel that if they manual focus, then everything needs to be in focus all of the time, which is literally impossible to do. A really good tip to hide those out of focus moments is to shoot in high frame rates and then just use speed wrapping in post. Tip number seven, practice, practice, practice. You may ask yourself, if my camera's autofocus is so great and it works, then why do I even need to know how to manual focus? Well, manual focusing is actually a skill and it's something that no one can take away from you once you've learned it. Regardless of the camera that anyone ever places in your hand, if you know how to manual focus, you will know how to use that camera. Just like any skill, keep practicing and you'll get better. Okay, and here are two bonus tips just for you guys. Bonus tip number one, move your body. Since the distance between your camera and the subject is what's most important when manual focusing, there may be times, for example, when recording a talking head, that the subject may move a little forward, lean forward, or may move back a bit. Well, you don't need to just keep changing the focus ring to make sure that they're in focus. You could actually physically move the camera a bit to compensate for the difference in the distance. So for example, if the subject moves forward, you could just slightly go back and that will maintain the distance between the two, therefore giving you the focus back. Bonus tip number two, use an external monitor if possible. Now you definitely don't need one. The small screen at the back of your camera is good, but sometimes for those really crucial shots when you need to ensure that your focus is in place, an external monitor helps a lot. The larger real estate will give you the confidence that you have got everything in focus. All right, well, that's all for me today. Thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something today. If I've helped you in any way possible, please smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.